Hello and welcome to this video on FVWM3. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the 1.0.9 release, which was put out on December the 3rd, 2023. And I'm just going to talk about some of the key features that are in here because I think it might be interesting. So in no particular order, um, let's talk about documentation. So for quite some time now, the documentation for man pages has been written not in graph or any other low level typesetting language, but actually has been converted to ASCII doc and the tool of choice that we recommend is ASCII doctor to render that. Um, An ASCII doctor is not specifically a man page generator. It, it can actually output to many different target formats. So with a little bit of work and some head scratching, we now have the ability to generate the man pages in HTML, should that be desired. And the way that you do that is with similar to man pages themselves, you pass a configuration flag called dash dash enable HTML doc, and that will go off and actually build the, the man pages in that format. When that happens, they're actually installed to your prefix and you can view them under prefix share slash FV wm3 slash html doc and here is what the the man the main man page looks like in all its glory which i think is pretty cool so there you go hopefully that's hopefully that's useful okay the next thing is to do with a new style option called corner length and what this does is it changes the size of the window handles, which for me are in this wonderfully garish pink color. So to do that, what we would do is specify a, a number, which is actually defined in pixels for how big we want the handles to be rendered. So for example, I could put the number 100, and you'll note that now, I have a much larger area with which to grab the corners of this window. And as I resize, you can see that the corner length remains at, at its correct length. Window shading behaves the same way as well. And I think this is particularly useful if you have, say, a 4K monitor or a high resolution monitor where you might want to have a little bit more real estate in order to be able to grab and resize windows um, to put the length back to its default value um, just omit the number and it goes back to how it was okay next up is some rander changes um, and this has been done with a view to trying to bring some abstraction and consistency to how monitors are referenced so at the moment if you want to query via fewm a property of a monitor let's say you want to know it's X position or it's whether it's a primary monitor or not. The only way you can do that is by knowing the name of the specific monitor that you want to reference. You can see up here in Lemon Bar, I actually have that printed out so I can actually see it and refer to it. This is just about okay if you use the same computer all the time, but what if you don't? What if you go into work and you have, say, the same number of monitors, but now the names are different? Suddenly your configuration that was referencing that monitor name 
will be different. So you've now got to change it per location and the whole thing becomes a bit messy. So what we've done is we've now assigned uh, a monitor a number in a given position. So to try and make that a bit clearer, if I bring up the man page, And I may as well bring up something a bit more visual. So in this linear layout, which I have for my monitors, um, this monitor here is in position zero. It's, it's the most, it's the leftmost monitor. So it gets the number zero, DP one in the middle gets number one, DP2 on the right gets number two. If you were to have this layout here, where this monitor was above DP1, then the ordering would be the topmost on the left is zero, nothing over here. So we come down to the left, so it's zero here, one here, two here. And this is what this information here is trying to establish. So the ordering is in, in terms of being ascribed a number to a monitor is top left to right going bottom left to right. And <clears throat> in this way, it means that now we can refer to monitors in a slightly more abstract way but with the understanding that we will always be able to know where the monitor's positions are and what this means is when it comes to say your configuration if i bring up if i bring up mine for instance um It means that when it comes to putting a window on a specific screen, I can refer to just the number. So here, one to zero it will always be the leftmost, one to one next to that, one to two next to that in the linear progression. And so now when I take this elsewhere and there are three monitors configured, usually in the, in the same sort of layouts, my configuration doesn't change. And I think that this feature might be useful to some of you in, in particular, because if you do move around and you do have to customize your configuration because of that, then this should help with that so have a play about with it it is quite interesting um, so for example if i wanted to know what the second monitor is configured then yeah it can tell me it's dp1 so that's how that's that's how that's referenced <clears throat> okay other things, the edge scroll command is now per monitor aware. So that means that you are able to turn on or off the edge scroll command on specific or all monitors, depending on your preference. And I suppose that this is probably the most useful um, if you have a per monitor layout and you might play games and what you don't want to have are pan frames being triggered if your monitor if, if your mouse hits the edges of the screen so being able to turn that on or off per monitor is now something that you're able to do also by the by um, there have been 
a lot of little bug fixes. Have a look at the uh, release notes um, for any specific details on that. But I haven't mentioned all of them in the in the release notes that I've put out. But you will you will be able to see most of them if you just check the uh, git logs. But it's mostly behind the scenes fixes rather than a, anything sort of user facing. Um, also, although obviously not for this operating system, but um, FEWM3 does now nominally run under XQuartz on MacOS for anyone that finds that useful. It's been tested very poorly by me because I don't always have access to that sort of environment. So it's probably in its infancy still as to how well it performs, but it does at least run. So if anyone is interested in looking into that more or indeed if there's any packages for um, homebrew or Mac ports even better because that way it might reach a wider audience but yes if, if anything isn't working the way it should just open an issue on github and I'll take a look so I think that those are the key f highlights for me at least in this release um, perhaps not the most interesting in terms of features but I do think the corner length one is a good one and I think bringing some consistency now to monitor ordering will definitely help so I hope this has been informative if there are any specific topics you feel you'd like me to cover let me know you can drop me an email or open an issue on github and barring that enjoy and I'll catch you in the next video thank you for watching